Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's the Poodle Mom again with the two toy poodles. So I think you guys have already heard the good news. We brought home a new puppy and his name is Finn. So for the first episode of Finn's series of videos, I'm going to be sharing with you how we brought home Finn. The things that we brought or the things you look out for and the things that I did in order to protect both Finn as well as the two girls before bringing him home. Because it's totally different if you're gonna bring home a new puppy and it's the only puppy that you will bring home and will be living in your house. Versus you're gonna bring home a new puppy to a family with already puppies at home or dogs at home. In my case, I have the two girls. So if you guys are interested in finding out what they are, then please keep on watching. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and maybe share the video as it would really, really help the channel. All right, let's dive into it. So for the first one, what do you need to bring on the day where you're gonna pick, bring home your puppy? Of course, you have to bring a crate. Just make sure you bring a crate because that was my biggest mistake when I brought home Summer. I came from work and drove straight to the breeder without anything, nothing, literally, besides the payment for the breeder. <laughs> I assumed that the breeder will be providing me a crate or if not, I could buy from the breeder and then just take her home from there. <laughs> nope. So I brought home Summer inside a paper bag and that was something that I definitely learned from because when I picked up Bailey, I, I at least had a carrier for her. And so for Finn, we brought his crate. It's just there just in case if he's more comfortable to stay there or this time since I wasn't alone then this time he can stay or be carried as we drive home. It never hurts also to bring in wee pads for them to make sure that you have something in case they need to do their business all of a sudden you never know or they get motion sickness at least you have something to catch the vomit or something and it will protect your car trust me your sanity <laughs> if you're if you're particular about keeping your cars clean another thing is if you can ask the breeder if they can provide you like a towel that they have been using as puppies then that would help too if not i suggest bringing in a, either a used a piece of cloth or a towel that you no longer use that you have used so that your scent is there so that they get comfortable with you right away that will really really help one more thing is to bring a leash just in case because you never know what could happen and lastly of course cleaning sprays i always always have cleaning sprays every time i bring my dogs in my car just make sure the cleaning sprays or the alcohol that you, you will be using is pet friendly because puppies are very very sensitive and sometimes if we're not careful it could hurt more than help so for my second tip if you will be bringing home a puppy to a place where there's no other pets, then you don't necessarily have to do this tip. You can skip to the next one. But if you have pups like I do, I suggest that you do this. In order to protect your own pups at home, you want to make sure that the new puppy will not be bringing anything unnecessary to the house. It could be ticks, it could be fleas, it could be anything like maybe parvo or all the unnecessary things that they can get from the kennel because you never know how good a breeder is. Please do not ask me about how much Finn was or where we got him or how we found the breeder, etc. because I have no plans of answering any of those questions because I have already said my piece regarding the breeders in the Philippines and I will stand by what I said. We also made compromises because it is what it is. That's the reality and Finn was the compromise. Now I'm not saying it was a bad decision or it's the wrong decision or it's the best decision for that matter. That's not the point. The point is we accept things as they are, so we are trying to prevent anything that could possibly go wrong. Now, it's no guarantee that it will prevent everything, but we are taking the necessary steps that we can at the moment. So I decided to bring him to the vet first before bringing him home. Now, normally the vets will not accept a checkup for your new puppy right away. They would ask you to wait at least one week before you bring them in for like a wellness checkup. But in this case, I told them it's because we have puppies at home. Now I'm not asking them to do like a full general checkup, but at least test them for parvo disease or kennel cough. What was the other one that I asked them? Distemper, those are the crucial illnesses that puppies usually catch from other dogs because they're very, very sensitive when it comes to that. And that is something that they can bring home to the house that could be passed on to my two girls. Now I'm not saying that Finn's breeder was bad, nor does he have it. It's just that I want to be careful and I want that assurance that he does not have it. I was more or less positive that he doesn't have it because he was very energetic and everything, but you never know until you have those tests. So I want them flat out with me. And at the same time, if there is something wrong with him, we can tell the breeder right away because they can never make that excuse that you already brought it home to your house and they must have gotten it from your house. But in this case, if you take them from their breeder and then straight to the vet, 
and you have them tested, then there is no question there as to where they got it. It's to protect ourselves as well as the breeder. And that way, I won't be blaming, we won't be blaming the breeders that, you know, they got this illness from their kennel and etc. Because those illnesses are the ones that can easily be passed and have high mortality rates. For the next tip, I suggest that you do not let your dogs meet the new puppy on the first night. One, you're very tired from the long drives and so is the new puppy. And you don't want to overwhelm them too much with the new everything. So the car ride was already stressful enough and to be placed somewhere there that's unfamiliar is already added stress to your new pup. So for the first night, the two girls were kicked out and they had to sleep in my mom, my parents' room and he had to stay here in my room. Next, of course, is as soon as they get home, potty training as well as crate training begins. Make sure that you will make your puppy sleep inside the crate for the first night. It's gonna be one painful night. For some people, in our case, it was painful for Finn because I cannot explain how, how wild this pup was. Because I'm shooting this a few days after, he's already tamed a little. Because I never experienced that kind of craziness for the first night with Summer and Bailey. Ba I thought Bailey was terrible for whining for 30 minutes. Because Summer, she only whined for like 5 minutes inside the crate. But when I just tapped the crate lightly and said like, it's a sleepy time and then I turned off the lights and stuff, she just went to sleep. For Bailey, she cried for maybe 30 minutes, more or less, and that's it. And it wasn't even a loud cry, but this puppy was, oh my god. We, I think we were waking up the whole neighborhood. I felt so bad for our neighbor because he was really, really loud, like crazy loud. So yeah. Um, it can be a crazy first night, but just bear with it because I promise that you will reap what you sow if you do it properly for the first night. So for the last tip, since you did not make your puppy and the dogs at home meet for the first night, you're gonna have to set up a new meetup in neutral ground. So in this case, that morning I woke up early despite being super, super tired and hardly getting any sleep that first night. I walked the girls for at least, I think, 30, 45 minutes around the village. And then they met outside the house, outside the gate, literally, because that is neutral ground. So they have to meet in neutral ground. That is one way to prevent any territorial behaviors or any unnecessary behavioral problem between the new dog and the old dogs. So I will be making a separate video for that, how I did it step by step, just so that you guys can see. So please look forward to that. So that's it. We hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something from it. This is just the first episode of a series of videos regarding Finn and the training of this new puppy and how we raised him in hopes of raising him as chill as these two girls, which <laughs> I kind of doubt. He's going to definitely mellow down, but I don't think he's going to be as chill as Summer. I think Summer's just an extra, extra, extra different case because honestly, can you guys guess who is the best friend of the new puppy? Summer doesn't want to deal with the new puppy. It's the funniest thing. I'll try to post videos on that as well. Alright, that's it. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!